Right, hello my friends, how is it going? Um, welcome back to This Week on the Internet. Uh, this week, oh God, I feel ropey, I feel ill. Um, but the show goes on, it just won't be a good show. Oh, God, that's way nicer than Mia makes it. That's, that's lovely. I'm moving in with you. So, uh, over the course of the last seven days, Kai Sinat breaks the Twitch sub world record. An American family have been sharing the same four sheets of reusable toilet roll. And we've discovered the most concerning thing to come out of China since, uh, well, not very long ago at all. All right, now, uh, if you're not from the UK, uh, over here, we have this fella. His name is Matt, uh, Matt Hancock to be precise. And he was basically our fella who was in charge of sorting out COVID. He is the strangest man on the planet, like proper weasel. Well, last week he received criticism uh, in the build up to the uh, Man United versus Newcastle game uh, for posting this TikTok. This is the most exciting thing that happened since Kevin Keegan. Bring it on. What, more excited than your, when your PA let you touch your ass at work? While your wife was at home with the kids? Now the funny thing here is, uh, basically somebody found this article uh, from like three years ago when the pandemic was happening. And the title is, Matt Hancock auctions pride and joy Newcastle United shirt to raise cash for NHS scrubs. That's the same shirt. Anyway, uh, he made a follow up TikTok to this. Really gutted about the result last night. I mean, to come so close. <sighs> Steady on sea biscuit. It's the same one that I auctioned for charity a couple of years ago. And what happened was the guy who bought it then um, then gave it back to me uh, as a gift. Oh yeah, sure Matt. Anyway, uh, Matt Hancock wasn't the only plastic Newcastle United fan that was out this week. There was me. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, somebody spotted me at the game uh, with me big bald dad there. Uh, we had a shit time. I spent the entire time uh, knocking back ammonium. Ammo no, not ammonium, ammodium, uh, hoping I wouldn't shit myself. But I didn't poo myself, which was good. Uh, we did lose. Uh, anyway, uh, somebody posted this, uh, a screenshot from this, to which Cam here tweeted, not touch St. James's in years, get a day at Wembley. I done every single Carabao Cup game and didn't get one. LOL makes me sick. This has 10,000 fucking likes, you bastards. I do respect the fact though, I, someone replied pretty swiftly and was like, oh, that's that's not true. Uh, here's a picture of me with him at one of those games you're on about. Cam decided he wasn't having any of that um, and just hid the reply, <laughs> which I thought, yeah, for fair play. Now the thing is, yeah, Cam, uh, if you put in the real hard graft here and made uh, reaction videos, uh, maybe somebody would have taken you too. Also this video, there was this video, oh, no. Also, this week, uh, there was this video of Chunks in a club uh, singing Chris Brown to Chris Brown. Now, he caught a lot of heat for this, which I think is a little bit harsh. Um, like, as long as he's not, you know, gone home and well, he's a family member, I think he's all right. All right, moving on. Uh, this week, Warwickshire Town Atherston held its 823rd annual ball game. Uh, now this is, uh, it's, this is mental, this is demonic. So basically in this town, somewhere in the depths of the UK, they have this really old tradition where they like board up an entire street, right? And they, for the entire day, they scrap it. Like I can't, I can't even show you the footage because they like batter each other over having possession of like a, a leather ball. Um, and basically they blow a whistle, they throw the ball out in the morning and whoever still has possession uh, of that big leather ball at 5.30 uh, that night wins the game. Now this week I was just looking into it. Um, it there, are, there are only two rules to it. It has to be played on Long Street. Um, there's probably a joke about it would be uh, well, better than playing it on little, no, short, fucking, fuck this week. And the second rule is that you're not allowed to murder people. That's genuinely all there is to it. Um, but anyway, congrats to Lewis Cooper here uh, for winning this year's bout, tie, bout, match. Fuck him. Also this week, uh, whoever is running Andrew Tate's Twitter has been making some interesting claims that he's punched a ghost so hard he sent it back to hell. I awoke last night by an icy chill and identified a ghost in my prison cell. He was terrified and begged me not to annihilate him. 
I sent him back to hell with a message for the demons. I am always ready. Uh, that is the most elaborate poetic metaphor for shagging your cellmate I have ever heard. Moving on. Uh, the search for a new home can be a long, daunting and disappointing task, especially when you see adverts like this one that a landlord posted on the property rental site Spare Room recently that tells potential tenants for this flat that they need to be out of the house between 9am and 5pm and also need to live in the kitchen. Uh, the property is available for £280 a week. Uh, it's in London, but I didn't need to tell you that. And anyone moving in will not be permitted to work from home and must make themselves scarce throughout the day. This place suits a professional, someone that works at their office from like 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. As the kitchen is your room, I will need access to make a coffee, get water, and some food from the fridge. I won't be cooking any smelling food though, so don't worry. No, that's the only potential issue with you living in the kitchen. So basically, uh, it's available as a shared place or as its own studio for £750 a week. Uh, don't worry though, it comes with a real mattress. Like, where are you even supposed to sleep if you don't take him up on this optional mattress option? Like, are you just curled up in the oven or...? Anyway, also this week, uh, King Charles has evicted Harry and Meghan from Frogmore Cottage in Windsor. And get this, uh, he has reportedly offered the residence to Prince Andrew. Apparently, Buckingham Palace issued an eviction notice to the couple just days after the release of Harry's memoir, Spare. That is the worst thing Charles has done to his son since having his mom killed in the 90s. Uh, the poor bastards, though, uh, they are now down to just their Cotswolds country house, their Vancouver lake house, and the two Californian mansions. Poor, poor fuckers. Apparently, uh, Charles offered the option to share with Andrew, uh, but he said Harry and Meghan would need to be out of the kitchen between the hours of 9 and 5 p.m. Fuck me, I sound like Sean Dyche. <laughs> Fuck. Thank you very much. Also this week, as I mentioned before, Kai Sanat became the most subscribed Twitch streamer of all time, overtaking Ludwig's previous record of 283,000 subscribers, uh, to which actually Ludwig responded. Congrats to Kai Sanat for breaking the all-time subscriber record. Very deserved. Uh, Twitch, now pay the man before you lose another record breaker. Uh, nothing to add from me here. I, I just need some form of title and thumbnail. So, uh, last Saturday evening, Floyd Mayweather fought in the UK for the very first time. Uh, what do you think? He's like, what, the, probably the greatest of all time in his sport? Uh, never, ever been beaten? You would think that would be like a big, a big deal. Uh, well, it wasn't. He was fighting uh, Aaron Chalmers. Uh, if you don't know who that is, he used to be on Joy Shaw. Uh, many moons ago. As you can see here, nobody fucking turned up. They booked out the whole O2 arena. Uh, this is a picture of the concourse 15 minutes before the show started. Also, uh, in addition to the swathes of empty seats, uh, Sports Mail revealed that a website called Show Film First, basically like a well-known like seat filler uh, website, was attempting to flog tickets for less than a fiver before the show started. Um, oh God. Matt Hancock uh, has refused to comment on claims that he was supposed to send out all the tickets to NHS staff members and forgot. Oh, honestly, colour me shocked. I, like what? Nobody wanted to turn up to a fight between a 46-year-old man and a fella who used to be on Geordie Shaw. How did they not see that coming? Also, um, in last week's... Um, oh my God, am I just... Oh, I'm just parmesaning my... Oh, sorry. Sorry, this is a gross episode. Last week when we were on that mountain, um, nobody was wearing any sun cream. I'm, I'm, just, I'm like a fucking lizard reptilian this week. Um... Oh, just, oh, that is gross. This angle's gonna be horrible, sorry. Uh, but we stick to it, we don't miss an episode. Also, this week, uh, a company in China has invented this device that allows a person to send kisses via the internet to their significant other. It's called Remote Kiss, uh, and it features silicon lips, as you can see here, and you can send and receive kisses uh, via an app. Uh, I'm sorry, right, but there is no way that the original intention for that was to simulate kissing. Anyway, uh, owner Zhang Zhongli said having a long distance girlfriend in his university days led to the invention of remote kiss. Uh, I would love to show you the other inventions he came up with during that time, uh, but we will get age restricted. Also, 
Also this week we got a Wakey Wines song. Uh, it's come it's come it's called Come Closer and it is Muhammad's biggest release uh, since he got out of prison four years ago. I've got to say the production value is quite high. Uh, it must have been quite a hefty budget. Um oh, four cans of prime. Well, hey. Can we just take a moment uh, to recognise that the phone shop in Wakefield here is also called Wakey Phone. Ah, I wonder if just all the shops are named something like this. Like, I wonder if they've got a... I was going to say a Wakey Weight Rose, but they, they won't fucking have one of those, will they? Um, Wakey Bakey for the local bakery. I mean, all they could sell drugs. Um, oh, funerals. Wakey Wakes. Let's just watch the fucking video. WFD sweets in bags for the kids and mums and teens. Got primary tropical puntas, red and lemon and lime and green. All right, so not only has the fella got a criminal record, uh, he's now released one too. Moving on, also this week, a mum who's doing her best to reduce uh, waste in the family household. She has basically been explaining how she uses a family cloth. Um, and so basically, this family cloth here is basically, so basically, 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 um, brain's not working. Uh, it's communal loo roll. Um, basic, not basically. <laughs> oh God, speak. Thank you. So what it is, not what it basically is, it is old Christmas uh, pajamas that instead of just throwing out, she cut up and um, they're wiping their ass with it instead of loo roll. When I use the bathroom, I let the bidet do all the heavy lifting, pat dry with a clean wipe, and then put the used wipe in this bin. That is demonic. Like imagine your grandma asking like, what happened to that? Ooh, that lovely set she bought you for Christmas last year and why she doesn't remember the brown stripes on it when she bought it in Primark. Anyway, she ends this TikTok with, oh, my husband's not a fan of the idea, so we just keep loo roll anyway. So it's all just pointless then, and you're choosing to share a shit panel with your kids. Fucking arrest that woman. This week, a 42 pupils were left stranded in the US after a hotel shredded their passports. The teenagers from Bar Beacon School in Walsall were due home on Saturday, but are still stranded until they can get emergency documents. The teacher leading the trip has since denied rumors that she paid the hotel staff to do so, uh, so she didn't have to return home to the West Midlands. I, it's a bit fishy, this. I have no idea. Like, something illegal has gone on here. Like, one, why have they only shredded 41 out of the 42 kids' passports? Like, what's, what's the plan for that lonely kid? Um... And how do you accidentally shred a passport? Like they, they, they look important and they're not easy to shred. Someone's, someone's locked away in a basement. Uh, anyway, with being ill this week, I, I have seen every TikTok under the sun. And because of this, I think we should genuinely start banning the sale of microphones like these. You should need a license for them. You should need to pass a three part test to prove you're not some arsehole moron that's gonna pollute the minds of the youth. What I'm on about, um, have a look at this clip here. If I ever go homeless, this is the steps I do. First thing I do is I'd get a cop, I'd sit outside Canary Wharf station and I'd write, I don't want money, I want books. And all I want is I want all those people walking in and out of station going to these highly successful, highly paying jobs. Surely they know something that I don't. Surely they can point me towards a book. Specky twat. Oh yeah, great advice. Like on oh, now, like tucking into the, the back pages of what? Like rich dad, poor dad, when you haven't eaten for three days. Like how do people like this actually, ex I wanna, I can't say what I wanna do cause that'll be against TOS, but he's a tosser, fucking tosser. I want all those people walking in and out of station going to these highly successful, highly paying jobs. Like what's a coked up investment banker with a signet ring and a family crest gonna know about getting out of homelessness? Like nothing. That's like the dopest thing about Dubai. It's like everyone pulls out the club and just hops in Lambos. Yeah, like all yeah. the boys, they're like 22. I'm like, what's going on? It's sick. I enjoy it. The thing it's is, that's normal lit. here. That's the thing. Like, but yeah, that's the fucking thing. Back in London or back in like Oxford or wherever the fuck in north of England. Yeah. Wherever no, not in England. That, that would be like, like the weirdest thing ever. We went to our ever. mate's birthday the other day and the boys had Lambo and a McClaza, a little McLaren. Yeah, it just makes you want to be sick, doesn't it? Moving on. Uh, this week, there was this video of somebody getting a hairline tattooed on. Although it doesn't quite look how you'd expect. For the price of 200 pounds, Gary got himself a tattoo. 
and a divorce. All right, what we got on our fantastic Reddit this week. Nothing. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next week. Please subscribe. Please go and watch us on Spotify. Rate us five stars. Love you very lots. See you next week.